Hi, everybody. Thanks for stopping in for another episode of Today in Iowa. I walked down to the pond today, September 22nd, and wanted to give you an update on what I've been doing the past uh, year. I got hooked up with a uh, poor contractor. and Well, let me explain to you here from the uh, pond. An excavator was used here to pull out some of the dirt around the exit pipe. And that's when we found right here where you can see all these leaves gathering. That's where the water's going. And it goes through here. Now, I don't know what the path is. But this morning, keep in mind this month we've had about 8 inches or 9 inches of rain. Well, that's one good push and it's going to go through. It almost feels like the nylon netting I used to grow the grass is holding it. And that, and that would take us right over there to that exit pipe. And you can't, probably can't hear it but it's coming out down below. I got hooked up with an unscrupulous contractor and I'm gonna go through five things I've learned from getting involved with him. Uh, he's put me two years behind on the project and what I'm worried about is with the undermining that's going on and the erosion and the scouring that's going on in this dam here, that one of these days I'm gonna come down and this is all going to be, be gone and washed out. I've contacted another contractor, but with the rain we're having this fall, I don't think I'm going to be able to get anyone here. We had good luck with a pump, <clears throat> and in a couple hours you were able to pump it down uh, a foot, and after a day you could get down several feet and take all the water off of this exit pipe in this hole here. I thought it was pretty uh, pretty smart of the guy that arrested the spring feed over here. Let's go take a closer look at that. I'll show you how he stopped that from coming in and what the plan was for that. My wife just came up with a good idea. What we're going to do to take some pressure off of this leak here, we're just going to cut that, that uh, elbow there off. And then hopefully this water will go through there and go through the pipe system and take a little pressure off of the ground, the ground path it's taking. So we're going to do that today. I really thought I had the right contractor yeah. when he came up with this idea <clears throat> to pipe the spring, bring it over here, and rather than take it all the way over here and dump it on the other side of the dike, when he got started, he said, we'll dump it here, the oxygen-rich water can go back in and keep the fish alive. I hadn't thought about that, but that's pretty smart. We haven't lost one fish. So let me show you how he did that. <clears throat> he just built some little stands here with some scrap to hold the pipe up. And I know there's Plenty of videos on YouTube that show how to siphon out a pond. They're all good ideas, but they just don't apply here. So just using a plastic box, he was able to uh, catch that spring water put his white pipe in it, spring water follows the white pipe out to where he wants to dump it. You can see the, uh, the spring bed there really is dried up. Very easy for a pump to stay ahead of that. My plan when we're done with this is to make this bigger and develop some kind of waterfall type feature so that I can capture this noise. But I'm really disappointed, and I knew this day was coming, that the uh, dike over there is getting worse. I think it's critical that we cut that pipe off today and give that water an easier way out. Get 
that's good. That's worth a looper right there. Acting kind of like an overflow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, we got the water running back in the plumbing, so that's a good place for it. Here's the five things that I've learned from this uh, episode and experience. Make sure your contractor has suitable financial status to meet the obligations for your project. Make sure they maintain a permanent place of business and have permanent employees. Make sure they have adequate equipment to execute the work. As we got going along this project, I got suspicious he did not have the equipment he said he had. Make sure he has appropriate technical experience and make sure they've completed projects of similar nature. If you can't check yes to every one of these boxes, get away from that person. It's not going to work out well. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode. So long, everybody. Have a great couple of weeks. We'll talk to you soon. So long.